Good day and welcome back to the channel everybody. For those of you new here, my name is Dr. Mim. I'm a medical doctor here in the UK and this channel's all about answering life's most difficult medical questions, including such classics as How does food become poo? And also, am I pregnant or am I okay? But today we're back again taking a look at Cells at Work Code Black Episode 2. I watched Episode 1 last week and uh, man, it was, uh, it was something. This episode is titled The Liver, Alcohol and Pride. Cannot wait to see how they depict everyone favorite legal drug. Let's just jump into it. I love how this anime just starts with the most joyful and light-hearted opening and then suddenly before you know it, BAM! Death! Necrosis! Blood clots! Oh, nice, nice. Macrophage. <laughs> So the macrophages shown here are not too dissimilar from the ones that we saw in the original Cells at Work Season 1. But yeah, just as a recap, they're known as a type of cell called a phagocyte, and their main job is to engulf invading bacteria or pathogens that come inside the body. And they can also activate other T cells and inflammation in the body by producing things called cytokines as well. I mean, I do like the whole sword play and action scenes and everything, but I really just want to see one white blood cell just open up its body and completely engulf a bacteria or a pathogen in the most disgusting way that would be really enjoyable. Uh, I'm a little bit of a weirdo. <laughs> okay, so this scene's a little bit interesting because you can see on the back walls there that they're actually made up of lots of cells kind of squashed together, but in fitting with the whole Cells at Work universe, these should actually be living, walking, talking, breathing people as well. So maybe it's a kind of Attack on Titan thing going on where... <laughs> just squash themselves together to form the wall. But anyway, mucosal cells or mucosal epithelial cells are basically the type of cells that form a lining between the outside and a structure within the body. For example, you can find them in the mouth, in the nose, in your trachea, in your stomach and intestines. These mucous membranes can act to protect the body from invading bacteria or things like dust or food particles, as well as providing a lubricated surface for things to slide through more easily. Just, that's just going to be the answer on every page. Any page he turns to. Cancer. But I'm delivering it to the cancer. Deliver the oxygen. <laughs> the only white blood cell in the entire body. Any time that there's an infection. <laughs> She's right there every single time. So mouth ulcers are actually really common. I'm sure most of you watching have probably had one at some point. And generally, they're not really anything to be too worried about. But sometimes they can indicate other diseases going on. For example, they can be more common in people who have inflammatory bowel diseases like Crohn's disease. And very occasionally, they can indicate something a little bit more sinister, like a cancer within the mouth. But generally, they heal themselves within a few days. And with good oral hygiene, there's not really anything to be particularly worried about. This person, however, by the sounds of it so far in this season, it doesn't seem like oral hygiene is at the top of their list of priorities. <laughs> well, in uh, that case... Yare yare. That's not gonna work, I'm wearing contact lenses. Can't see shit with those on. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Finally! Oh, that's what I've been waiting for. This is exactly what I've been waiting for. So this is what I mentioned earlier. They're phagocytes, which perform phagocytosis, which is just engulfing any bacteria or pathogens. In reality, the way this looks is like the whole white blood cell just wrapping itself around something and kind of swallowing it into itself. But at least they showed it in some way, and that makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. I thought it was going to be mucus for a second. I thought that's what all that liquid was. But he's gargling mouthwash, which is a good thing to do, by the way, if you do have an ulcer in your mouth, or just generally any way to prevent yourself from getting them in the first place. Oh man, there's just nothing sexier than seeing your crush just eat a monster with her bare teeth. It's, it's the best. <laughs> Just for reference, despite how old that OAP red blood cell looks, at most he's around 120 days old because that's the average lifespan of a red blood cell, after which most of them will end up in the spleen and get eaten by those macrophages that we saw earlier. It's a great life being a red blood cell. 
こいつはアルコールだ仕事なんてやってられちゃえやつるよよかった Oh god are they getting drunk <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in reality, your red blood cells are not directly affected when you drink alcohol, but they can be affected in the long term if someone consumes a lot of alcohol very frequently. Heavy alcohol consumption can affect the bone marrow, which affects the way that red blood cells are produced, and they end up becoming abnormally large and less efficient at transporting oxygen. This is something that we call a macrocytic anemia, where if you were to look under the microscope at someone's red blood cells who was a heavy drinker, you would see that their mean cell volume, or MCV, is a lot higher than it should be. <laughs> Welcome to Night City. <laughs> whoa, whoa, family friendly channel, family friendly channel, guys. Not going to be having any of that. Why? Why is that necessary? Why do the cells have to be so voluptuous? Uh, somebody tell me, please. I'm getting flashbacks of streaming GTA 5 and going into the strip club and not knowing what to expect. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. So, uh, yeah. Um, how's how's things going, everybody? Okay, so ADH or alcohol dehydrogenase, which is what it stands for, is an enzyme created in the liver that breaks down alcohol into things called aldehydes and ketones. Interestingly, a lot of people from East or Southeast Asia have a genetic difference, which means that the alcohol dehydrogenase enzyme that they produce converts alcohol to acetaldehyde more quickly than other people do in the West. And this results in what people term the Asian flush, which can happen even just after a couple of alcoholic drinks. <laughs> <laughs> don't like it, don't like it. It doesn't need to be this sexy destiny, okay? It doesn't need to be. That's right, guys. It's fun. It's fun to sober up. It's not the drinking alcohol that people enjoy. It's the sobering up. I mean, everybody loves a hangover, am I right? <laughs> okay, so in summary, alcohol gets converted to acetaldehyde via alcohol dehydrogenase, which then gets converted to acetate by aldehyde dehydrogenase. The acetate is then broken down into carbon dioxide and water. And this is all facilitated by the liver, which, in case you didn't realize, is a strip club within your body. <laughs> It's exactly like he said, guys. One or two little drops don't really make a difference. But if everybody worked together and smashed that like button and subscribed, amazing, amazing things would happen. Thank you very much, guys. <laughs> Unfortunately, on a bit of a serious note, alcoholic liver disease is one of the main causes of liver disease in the world right now. But that also means that it is a completely avoidable cause of liver failure. And the only real treatment for critical liver disease is a transplant. And if it's caused by alcoholism, that makes things a little bit more difficult. Another main cause of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is actually obesity. And with rising rates of obesity, especially in the West, more and more people are presenting with this kind of disease. I think this is a good example to show that if one aspect of your body or your your lifestyle or your diet is bad, then the entire body gets affected. Oh, he's dead. No. Now I know why this episode is called The Liver, Alcohol and Pride, because there is nothing more prideful than to die in a gentleman's club. <laughs> oh, surely they're not going to show a macrophage eating him. Surely not. Okay, okay, they covered it. Oh, okay, oh, a little bit. The, the silhouette. It's enough for us to use our imagination. Jesus. Uh, I could think of a few better ways. I'm sure I could think of maybe one or two ways that might be better than being eaten by a lovely lady. But that's the reality, guys. Our bodies are cannibals. We eat ourselves on a daily basis. That sounded a bit wrong. You know what I mean, okay? <laughs> That's right, hangovers. As he said, they're caused by acetaldehyde buildup, but also things like electrolyte imbalance and dehydration as well. People tend to forget to drink water when they're drinking alcohol, and alcohol itself is a diuretic, which means that it causes the body to lose water. So all of these factors put together cause the classical symptoms of a hangover, which things like headache, nausea, vomiting, or feeling dehydrated. Again? 
<laughs> what? Ah, uh, okay, okay, yeah. So a lot of people claim that having alcohol during a hangover makes the hangover go away or makes the symptoms a bit better. There's only really anecdotal evidence for this and it hasn't actually been proven in any kind of scientific way. What's most likely happening is that the intoxication effects of the alcohol is acting as uh, analgesia or pain relief to reduce some of the symptoms like the headache, for example. But then you're just basically going to be stuck in a cycle of drinking alcohol, having a hangover, drinking more alcohol until you basically become an alcoholic. So yeah, not the smartest of solutions for that. And that about wraps up episode two of Sells Out Work Code Black. Another interesting, sometimes depressing, occasionally gratuitous depiction of what the body goes through when you drink alcohol. As well as finally a scene where we have some actual depiction of phagocytosis. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please do leave a like to let me know. And also leave a comment on what you thought about this episode. I literally read and reply to pretty much every single comment on here. I'll catch you over on Twitch where I stream Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays at about 9 p.m. UK time. But otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe, stay healthy and take care, everybody. Peace.